All right, guys, this is attempt number two on Ted Park's Master Challenge number two. I spent 10 minutes on this thing, and I got nothing. There's a little bit of feedback, a lot of crunching around the side of there. There are six pins. I do have a key. There you go. We'll unwrap that later when we need it. Uh, this lock does not give very good feedback. I'll say that for it. Um, a lot of serrations in here. Probably some threaded chambers. Uh, just the way it seems to act. So let's go ahead and try to get into it. It is very floppy, so probably all security pins. But I notice if you put too much tension, it will bind up, and then you get nothing. So you've got to go very light tension, and I end up dropping that tension wrench about a half a dozen times. You've got to be quick to hold it with your pick. Okay, I just touched six, and I got a very slight click. And my tendency would be to push with my thumb to check but if you do that you're going to lock up the cylinder I just clicked three again we've got serrations here for sure looking for some kind of counter rotation there it is right there four very deep feels like a spool come on wow Okay, I think we got him that time, but almost dropped that tension wrench. Very deep. Oh, we dropped the tension wrench. Now you see what I'm talking about. I don't think we lost anything, but you've got to be quick to hold it with your pick. Okay, I just touched six again, and I got another click on him. Very slight turn on the core. Okay, there's five. Come on. A lot of counter rotation on this guy. Okay, I'm losing the tension wrench. All right, let's try that again. Let me get on him. Okay, well, that was easy. Very light tension. And I, he just clicked without a lot of force that time. Okay, I'm on pin one, counter rotation. Okay, we got some clicking going on there. Okay, that was four again, another click, and now we got a good fault set going. It's deeper than I got during the first attempt, I'll say that. I think that was me just falling. Oh, tension wrench fell out, but I caught it with a pick. That was a click on one, but um, nothing deeper on the fault set for it. Okay, that was a click on three. And one again behind that tension wrench, and he feels okay. Okay, that was two, and I got a very slight turn on the core. It was the deepest fault set that I've had yet. That was me falling off wet the uh, boarding. Okay, a little bit of counter rotation on five. Okay, I should set him. Oh, dropped the pick, dropped it again. Okay, that was six again. So he's acting like a little like a gatekeeper. Let me see if I can get one again without knocking out the tension wrench. I think he's okay. I'm on two, a little bit of counter rotation. I'm going to take a chance on him.
Okay, got a click, but now we lost a little bit of a false set. Okay, there were six again. He, fall, he keeps falling down. Yeah, one, two. Okay, that was a nice deep click. I'm going to fix my tension wrench before it falls again. Okay, that was two again. That was falling off the warding. And I can't find anybody giving feedback. I'm going to try one. He's the hardest one to reach. And I think, I still think he's good. So now it's a matter, either there's a T-pin in there somewhere, or there's somebody hung up, one left at the shear line, that is not a spool. Okay, I'm on... I'm taking a chance here. I'm, gonna, I'm on five. Eh. Yeah, that didn't work too well. All right, we got a fault set back, but five was not the one to mess with. I think he fell back down. Okay, that was one, two, wrench is falling out. That was five. Counter rotation on one. Come on. Okay, there's one. And there we go. Man, what a nasty lock. All right. I think a lot of this was luck. That's what, it's around seven minutes. I think a lot of that was definitely luck. Um, all right, we need a Phillips. Let's see what Ted's got in here. There was a lot of crunchy stuff in there. There were some weird counter rotations, multiples. Number six, I had to set him at least four different times. It seemed like every time I touched six, he had fallen back down. So clearly got him way out of order, which kind of adds to the argument that a lot of this was luck, Ted. We're going to find out what you got in here. Maybe if we can get that off of there. Come on. There we go. Now you'll come out. Maybe. Dang, Ted. Did you weld that in there? <laughs> I can't even get the, the nut out of there. Come out of there. There we go. Use force. When in doubt, use force. Okay, nothing special up inside of there. We got a normal tailpiece. All right, um, I do have a key. Let's go ahead and take a look at that key so I can lock him back up. Well, that bidding kind of explains it. I don't feel too bad now. Let's make sure the key does work. I hope, otherwise we'll be picking this thing again. Yep, works beautifully. And let me go ahead and pull that dude off. Get all this stuff out of here. Okay, that's not going to work. We'll use that one. All right. Let us turn it like so. And that should get it. Okay, we're caught up on pin number one there. Let me set the core down for a second. Maybe. And I'm gonna push. Oh, uh, I'm gonna push that pin down so we can fully push the follower through, so nothing pops out and hits anybody in the eye. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Standard, 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 standard. We got one modified spool, homemade, and then. Something of a T-pin, and 
I see nothing unusual about the core. No, no evil stuff built in there. Yeah, this one is... This key pin was machined on the top to narrow it down like an inverted T-pin. All right, let's see what we got here. Turn this over. Try not to let anything pop out. All right, we got a standard spool, commercial. We have, he was inverted with the small diameter pointing down. There's probably a master wafer in there. I'm going to turn him upside down and see if we can't get him out. No, there's no wafer in there. He was upside down with no wafer. I don't know why that would be. Put these springs up here. Okay, we're looking at another commercial spool. Another commercial spool. This on this explains all. Here's another. Well, this is kind of serrated. And then the last one, it is another spool, which explains all the setting and resetting. So used exactly for what they're supposed to be used for. And inside of here, I see nothing. No threading counter milling no nothing so the only thing frustrating me there with these two homemade with a homemade t-pin uh, on number six and then this number five also had a little narrowed down on the end to cause a little frustration and then the this inverted t-pin I really don't think entered in the formula because he was actually turned around like this with the small diameter pointing towards the spring so I don't think I don't think he entered into the formula at all. If he had been turned around perhaps like that, then maybe we'd have been dealing with something a little bit different, a different animal. But there you go. We got a total of five, I'm sorry, four spools, one kind of serrated, and then I'm going to call them a standard in, ter in terms of picking. It's a T-pin, but in terms of picking, that was, um, that was probably reacted a lot like a standard. And then these two narrowed, narrowed top key pins. So there you go. Ted, thank you, sir, for the lock. Appreciate it. Gave me a, a lot more trouble than I would have expected from a few spools and and a couple of homemade pins, and especially with no, no threaded uh, Bible and no threaded core. Very surprising in terms of resistance. So there you go. That's proof that some pretty wild bidding will give you at least a good level of security. Anyway, fellas, thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.